Hi there, I'm Wes Wigglesworth with TMC, and I'm here at our headquarters in Peabody, Massachusetts, just north of Boston. And today I will be talking about active vibration control and the key differences um, related com as compared to passive vibration control. Um, so first, I thought I'd start off by talking about some of the key elements um, that are required to really um, call something active vibration control. Um, so <clears throat> really the three key components are an inertial sensor that actually measures the vibration, a control system with a feedback loop, and an actuator. All right, so uh, one of the things about active vibration control and passive vibration control is that the terms can be interchanged and sometimes confused. Um, so I wanted to just back up and give some examples about both types of systems. And I was going to start with something that the industry as a whole really agrees on, and that is that a simple spring is a passive isolator. So something like a, a steel spring between two, two steel plates, um, a rubber mount, and um, something like a, an air chamber that uh, simply gets pumped up with air and you put your payload on top of these, uh, type, these isolators, four of them typically, and it supports the payload and it attenuates vibration, but only at very high frequencies. And it's very dependent on the uh, resonant frequency of the spring. Um, so rubber springs could be uh, an eight hertz isolator, 10 hertz, even 20 hertz isolator. Um, and a steel spring could be something like four hertz or seven hertz. Um, and of course, uh, an air spring is typically a little bit lower frequency. And that's important because anything below, any vibration that is below that frequency coming from the floor will not get attenuated. Um, so these simple, uh, simple rubber mounts and steel springs, they're easy to set up. Um, there's no height control and they're pretty low performance. Um, again, mainly because they're only attenuating floor vibration that is above that resonant frequency. So um, very high frequencies um, are attenuated. Now, typical applications for simple passive rubber mounts are things like simple optical microscopes, low power, low magnification, um, machinery in, in a factory. If you're trying to uh, reduce the impact of that machinery on the rest of the factory, these would be simple um, rubber mounts that are used in applications like that. Very, um, very uh, low, low, low magnification type of uh, instruments, things that are not highly sensitive to, to floor vibration. Now the next step up would be something known as pneumatic isolation. And uh, one of the first differences is that it's a little bit uh, more difficult to set up. So with a pneumatic isolation system, the vibration isolation performance is much better than a simple rubber mount or steel spring because it's a softer isolator. It has a resonant frequency of around two hertz, maybe a little bit less than that, maybe a little bit more, um, but it's attenuating floor vibration starting at around four or five hertz compared to a simple rubber spring that's amplifying at that frequency or even amplifying at a higher frequency. So a pneumatic system, a little bit more difficult to set up than a passive spring, but well worth it. And uh, typically includes a mechanical self-leveling system, which is a high control valve and a mechanical linkage to the payload. And that senses, you know, a deflection in the payload and re-levels that payload. It does require a continuous supply of air or nitrogen. And uh, an option for the height control is electronic non-contacting height control. And uh, a, another option in combination with a pneumatic spring is an active damping system. Now, some will consider a pneumatic isolator with self-leveling height control to be an active vibration control system, but it's really not. It is passively attenuating the floor vibration. Yes, there's a sensor, but it's a mechanical linkage to the payload. 
that is reacting to the deflection of the payload and then controlling the air in and out of the isolator to re-level the, the isolator and the payload. But it's not active vibration control. There's no inertial sensor and there's no uh, active feedback loop or feed forward loop. With these other options, electronic height control. Again, some might consider that active vibration control, but it really is just to improve the precision of the height uh, repeatability system and the, the height control system. With active damping, uh, we would add a sensor to the payload. Um, so it would be, you know, a sensor mounted to the uh, payload and a signal back to the controller, which then uh, activates the air going in and out of the isolator um, to really only reduce the amplification at the resonance of the air isolator. So that is uh, an active control system, but it's not improving the overall performance of the vibration isolation system. It's only um, attenuating the amplification at the resonance of the, the air isolator. Typical applications for pneumatic isolation are things like high magnification optical microscopes, atomic force and confocal microscopy, uh, applications like electrophysiology and other, um, other techniques used in life science research. And a good example of that is TMC's clean bench table and micro G isolator. So this is a, a pneumatic isolator. It's a, about a one and a half to two hertz resonant frequency. And uh, the table is supported by these springs and is fairly soft. Uh, it, if there was a moving stage on top of the payload, the, def the payload would deflect and it would, it would bounce around a little bit before it settles down. So taking some of these advanced features that are uh, coupled with a, a pneumatic system and taking that to the next step would be something known as a parallel type active vibration control system. And in this system, we start with a pneumatic isolator. We have non-contacting electro pneumatic height control. We include um, the active damping of the payload, but we also add linear motors as an actuator. And when this is combined in a um, feedback system, it is very good at canceling stage motion. So it's a very high performance system. It's a bit complex, certainly more, uh, more involved in, in the setup and initial tuning, um, but it's very, very good for supporting payloads that have a moving stage. When the stage moves, a pneumatic spring would normally deflect pretty easily, but by adding the uh, linear motor in parallel with the with the pneumatic spring as part of a feedback system, it is sending a force to the payload to cancel the deflection uh, of that payload. Uh, it can also, one of the other uh, nice things about this type of system is that it can be connected to the, to the stage of, of the tool and information from that stage can be used in a feed forward manner to even more aggressively cancel that stage motion. Now, is this an active vibration control system? It sure is, uh, no doubt. Um, but in terms of vibration isolation of the floor, it's really defined by the, the uh, spring that's being used. So if it's a pneumatic isolator, which is common, could also be a steel spring or even a rubber mount, but um, the stiffer the spring, uh, the less impact the, 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 uh, the motor has. Um, but in terms of floor vibration isolation, it's really defined by that, that, uh, that spring. So in this um, design, um, these 
These add-ons, such as the linear motor, the active damping, it's all working to either cancel the stage motion or reduce the amplification at the resonant frequency of the airspring. So the attenuation of floor vibration is not necessarily improved. Slightly, uh, particularly again at the amplification, or excuse me, at the resonant frequency of the isolator, um, but not beyond that. So it's a very, uh, it's very limited in terms of bandwidth for floor vibration. TMC's Electrodamp is an excellent example of a parallel type active vibration control system. And while these systems are limited in terms of their active bandwidth for, for floor vibration control, something like Electrodamp is really well suited for being designed into semiconductor manufacturing tools like wafer metrology instruments that use an electron beam and a moving stage to position the, the, the wafer um, to inspect and move on. So canceling that stage motion is uh, critical in improving the throughput and maximizing yield and throughput in uh, semiconductor manufacturing. The next type of active vibration control is serial type active vibration cancellation. And with this system, it's actually a little bit easier to set up than an, an electro damp parallel type system. It's uh, in comparison, quite simple, yet advanced in its technology. Uh, it utilizes a rubber spring, an elastomer, inside the isolator, so it provides a very stiff and stable support of the payload. Um, the, the active control system is decoupled from the payload because it is in series with a rubber spring. So the high frequency rubber spring actually uh, decouples the active control system from the payload. The control system is downward looking, so it's looking at the floor. It's measuring the vibration coming up from the floor, not the payload. And as a result, it has the largest bandwidth available for active vibration control, um, down to below one hertz and up to over a hundred hertz. So, this system is quite unique. Uh, TMC's Stasis system is a, is a prime example of this technology, and it is the most advanced commercially available system using piezoelectric uh, actuators, uh, inertia sensors to, to measure floor vibration down to very low frequency, and uh, a very um, uh, special rubber mount that um, has a uh, frequency in the 15 to 20 hertz, both 20 hertz, both uh, vertically and horizontally. So common applications for this are actually supporting tools that have something like electrodamp built into them or pneumatic isolators, simple pneumatic isolators built into them like electron microscopes, um, SEMs and TEMs are commonly supported by uh, something like this because those tools are being installed in environments that have, um, that have very low frequency vibration coming from the floor, which will limit the performance of the tools because they have pneumatic isolators built into them and they're very sensitive to floor vibration at low frequencies. So again, you know, there's an inertial sensor, there's a control system, an actuator. Is this an active system? Absolutely it is. And um, it's one of the, um, not only the most advanced, but often the only choice for supporting tools in a harsh environment when uh, low frequency is a problem. So in summary, uh, when you are looking for a vibration isolation system and you hear the word active or, or you think you might need active vibration control, you definitely want to ask the question, does it have an inertial sensor? Is there a feedback or feed forward control loop? And is there an actuator to react to the signal coming from the inertial sensor in the control system to cancel that vibration? So that's it for today. Again, I'm Wes Wigglesworth with TMC. See you next time.